morning how's everyone doing hey it's Jono from atom here um for our Ut up and adam lesson this thursday morning nearly the weekend we've made it thank you for everyone who's been coming um to the lessons all week um i'm excited to um get going today um who we got who we got who we got hi Haley. hi oscar hi rachel i'm doing very well thank you thank you all for asking jenny yeah i'm good esme how are you Hi you, hi Alexander, um, hey Tegan, nice to see you again too. <laughs> um, yeah, doing really well Luciana, excited to go over homographs, homonyms and homophones today. Um, three words you'll be hearing a lot from me today. So that's exactly um, what we're covering. Hi Four, nice to see you again too. Um, to get us kicked off, does anyone know the difference between um, homonyms, homographs and homophones? Home, uh, homo, homophones, homophones. Does anyone know the difference before we get um, going? I love studying too. That's what, we're, so we're doing homonyms, homographs and homophones today, Haley, to build on what we covered yesterday in synonyms, antonyms and vocabulary. So that's what we're doing. I'm excited to um, succeed so It's gonna be a fun lesson. Okay, what I'll do is we'll get started at nine um and then we will then we will get going then we will be going till 9 45. great math rhombus joke in the um chat from reese why was the math teacher late for school um she got on the wrong bus oh wrong bus really nice that made me chuckle that's what i needed on this thursday morning so thank you for giving me a nice laugh uh but it's not a math today you'll be happy to know it is english I'm just getting the presentation up and then we'll get going. Um, hi, Tali. Hi, Cara. Hi, Rochelle. I'm doing good, Zion. How are you doing? Um, great definition from um, Lucas already. Um, homophone is a word which sounds the same but has a different meaning. Really good. Um, Amma, your homograph is the same word spelled with a different meaning. Very nice. Noreen, thank you. I'm glad you like my sessions. Uh, home friends sound the same but spelled differently well done nancy really good definition so a strong start from everyone let's i am gonna share my screen and then we'll have a little warm-up get our brains nice and ready to learn and then you know it we are going to be going into um, the presentation there's going to be polls there's going to be questions in the q a everything you need for a fun way to start your day up and adam let's get it let's get into it so um, welcome to the lesson. I'm Jono. Some of you might have come to my other lessons, in which case, why are you still coming? I don't get it. <laughs> um, otherwise, welcome to Up and Atom. It's an, we'll be doing an English lesson built on the Key Stage 2 National Curriculum for primary school kids. It will range in ages from like 7 to 11. We'll start with some easier questions and then get progressively harder, depending on how mean I'm feeling. We'll see how, we'll see if we get to any of the super hard questions. But let's get going. It's nine o'clock. You've got me here and Clem on the Q&A answering some of the questions. Okay, let's go. So 10 second speech questions. I might give you more than 10 seconds. Um, have a look at the screen just to warm us up. Um, where is your hand cream from? The students ask Jono. Is this direct or reported speech? So we covered this last week. So I'm just testing you to make sure all the English knowledge that we learned last week is still nice and locked into your heads. So indirect and reported speech are synonyms. So you need to learn both terms. OK, 10 more seconds to get your votes in just to warm up. So it's just a minute on these ones. OK, I'm going to end the poll now. How did we all vote? We can see the majority of us, 143, went for answer option A. And quite right, it is direct speech. We've got our cute little bunny ears or speech marks or quotation marks telling us that um, I'm using the exact words that you all used. Where is your hand cream from? That's exactly what we said. Question mark within the bunny ears. We covered that yesterday. Make sure you punctuate your direct speech. And then the students ask Jono, that is our reporting clause telling us who said what. Really, really nice. Strong start, everyone. Um, okay, 
Well done, Tegan. That's right, John, I said. Who is speaking in that sentence? So who is speaking in that sentence? Great job on this question, everyone. About 80% of us have voted in 30 seconds. If you need a bit longer on this question, I'll leave the poll running, but you can always watch this video back on YouTube if you want to have a bit longer and you can pause it now before I give away the answer. Okay, five more seconds. Really strong job on this question, everyone. We know our reporting clauses. Um, the majority of us, 96%, 194 um, grammar experts. Um, well done, it's me that's speaking. The reporting clause says, John I said. Um, so well done, Tegan, that's right. Probably something I'll be saying again today. So that is a um, nice little warm up on speech questions, which we covered um, in the, when did we do that? I think in the grammar gauntlet last week. It's all blurring to me now, honey. Um, okay, next, which word is from Latin? This was from our words of the week last week. One of these words is from Latin and one is from Greek. Do you remember which one it is? Okay, so let's see how we did. Again, this is just a little warm up, so don't worry if you don't have time to vote. We'll be getting to homographs, homonyms, and homonyms in just a second. Even split, this is so interesting. We have a 50 50 split um, with this um, question um, between A and B, very interestingly. So let's have a look. Which word is it? It is pro bono. Pro bono is from Latin. It means for the greater good. So maybe you, up alongside your job, you might do some pro bono work, which would be charity or unpaid. Um, and it means for the greater good. Thespian, I believe, is from Greek. And it's someone who's like very theatrical. Never a word that's been used to describe me, I promise. I assure you. Okay, so nice little warm up. Thanks, everyone. Hope your brains are warmed up. Those are all questions that have come from topics we've covered in the last few weeks and all of those videos will be on the lesson library or for the moment YouTube so you can watch them back if you had a little bit of trouble but what we're covering today we are going to be look it's HHH homophones homographs and homonyms question polls and you heard it here first there's going to be some jokes I've got to get them in before all of my creative control is taken away from me so there might be some puns coming up as well, which um, if you came to the English club on Monday, we also covered how we can use um, homonyms, homographs and homophones to make puns, which are like plays on words. OK, let's get going. So homophones are two words that sound the same, but spelt differently and have different meanings. So who's who's or seller and seller. So I'll give you some more examples. Um, whose means who is, and then whose is a relative pronoun. Um, seller is like where you keep your wine um, or like maybe some other stuff. Um, and a seller is like a vendor, somebody who sells things. Does anyone in the Q&A, can you give me some examples of some other um, homophones? What other homophones do we know? Call and call, okay, yeah. <laughs> John is amazing jokes. That's very sweet of you, but I don't think it's quite, um, Amazing. Okay, so I and I, really nice. Night and night. Bear and bear, well done, Eric. Bait, bat and bat, okay. Here and ear, okay. Night and night. Allowed and allowed, really nice of you. C and C, well done, Elonial. Roads and roads, nice, Tanya. Yeah, roads is a name, I guess that works. Hair and hair, well done, Yashi. Male and male, well done, Hannah. Blue and blue, well done, Samantha. By and by from Anna, really, really good. There, there and there, well done, hi. The classic trio, really nice. Here and here, well done, Sam, really good. Night to night from Tegan and Riley, another popular one. 
Um, really, really nice. Okay, so the key thing with a few of you are making this mistake, homophones, they sound the same, but they're spelt differently, okay? So words like row and row won't be um, homophones because even that they're like, they don't, one, they don't sound the same and they are spelt the same. So if two words look the same on the page, um, they won't be homophones. They need to be spelt, spelt differently. That's the key thing. The word phone, like use that to help you remember that because phone is like, it makes noise and you talk on it. Like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm really good. How's your day? Yeah, it's okay. Like a bit boring, but whatever. Phone, that's when we talk, right? So phone is to do with sound. So homophones, they sound the same, but they're spelt differently. Okay, here are some more examples. Um, air and air. So air is like what you breathe. Air is like the air to like a throne or like the monarchy, that kind of stuff. Find and find, so to look for, and then find is like you get a parking ticket. Um, main and main. Um, so main is like the main event. Main is like that thing that lions have. Um, and then B and B. Notice with homophones, they are all spelt differently, but they will be pronounced the same, okay? So make sure you're able to differentiate between them. So those are homophones. Now we're on to homographs. So homographs, they are spelt the same, but pronounced differently and have different meanings. So the word live can be pronounced with a short I sound. So they live in a caravan or with a long I sound as in the football match was live. So another example, Jono lives in his house and is live right now teaching. So that's an example of a homograph. Do we know any other homographs? So homographs, remember, they're spelt the same, but pronounced differently. Just waiting to see if we have any. So spelt the same, pronounced differently. Do we have any examples yet? I think I need to scroll through all of the um, homophone answers before we get there. Yeah, really good, Noreen. Minute and minute, very good. Whoever's called up an atom on Zoom, love it. Bow and bow, really, really nice. Row and row, well done, Satish. So Tina, maiden maid, that would be a homophone because they um, sound the same. Remember, homographs need to be um, spelt the same. So row and row, really good, Sabaji. Nicole as well was minute and minute, really nice. Red and read, really nice, Temi. I would say, James, careful with right and right. They can have different meanings, but they're not pronounced differently. So again, you can turn right. Um, so like you go right, or you can be, it can be right and wrong. It's a really good example of a homonym, which is coming up next. But remember, homographs are spelt the same and pronounced differently. Live and live, really good. Really, really nice. Bass and bass, Alexander, cool, like it. Hi, Victoria. Um, okay, really nice. So here are some more um, other some other examples. I think we had all of these in the um, um, chat, apart from entrance and entrance. One of my favorite ones because you don't always think about it straight away. But row is an art can be to like like when you have an argument to row, or row is like a line in a table, or like when you're rowing your boat, gently jetting down the stream. Um, entrance is the way into something. So you will enter your house through its entrance. Um, whereas to entrance is to like amaze someone like, oh, I'm so entranced by this lesson. I'm learning so much. So that's entrance. Bow is a beautiful knot in a ribbon, not just any knot. It's a beautiful knot in a ribbon. And then bow is like a gesture like, oh, thank you so much for coming to this lesson. Bow. Um, lead is a type of material. It's an element. PB is the um, atomic symbol for lead. Don't need to know that yet, but if any of you like chemistry, that's what lead is. And then lead is to take control of something. So I am leading this lesson at the moment. Um, so that's those are homographs. Next, let's move on to homonyms. So homonyms are pairs or groups of words that sound the same, spelt the same, but have different meanings. So like bat is like that. What sound does a bat make? I don't know, like, I don't know. That was a horrible noise, but whatever. That's that can be a bat, it can be a small animal, or like like baseball, like a baseball bat, or you can bat your eyelashes, which I'll, I was kind of trying to do, but that looks a bit terrifying. Do we have any other examples of homonyms? Can you let me know which ones you already know? We already had right and right earlier from James, I think. 
Um, but do we know any other homonyms? So they are spelt the same, they sound the same, but they have different meanings. Do, 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 do. I'm glad you love chemistry, Tali. It is the best. Yep. So, yep, right and right. Very good, Rachel. Zia, left and left as well. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, might. Really good, Haley. Yeah, that's a nice one. Beat and beats. Well done, Eloniel. So, break and break, Nicole. They are spelt differently. So even though they sound the same, they're not spelt the same. So those would be um, homographs. Nail and nail, well done, Eleanor. Top and top, well done, Ashika. Orange and orange, Lucas, I'm not sure about that one. I guess, I guess orange, the color and orange, the fruit. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, really, really good. Well done, king and king, king and king. Not sure about that one, but maybe. What do you mean my king and king? Rock and rock, well done, Ken. Man and man, well done, Kieran. Really great, really great examples on the Q&A. Thank you for everyone who's joining in on Zoom and giving me some fun answers. Here are some other examples. So express, express yourself, what a song. So express is something that's done fast. So like, maybe it's like, I've got to go. I'm going to go get my coffee from the express machine. So it's something that's done fast. Or it's a way of showing your thoughts and words. So in our creative writing lessons, we express how we feel. Match, football match. If you like that, great. Um, otherwise, it's a stick of wood to light a fire. Or your candle. Love a candle. Um, interestingly, I really like rose-scented candles. There you go. So rose means a flower, but it's also to, like, to have moved up. So like the sun rose over the mountain. Or like I rose above it all. If there's like drama in your friendship group, you maybe rose above it all and didn't um, didn't partake. Life's too short. Goodbye. Next. So those are some homonyms, right? Okay. We. I've been talking for too long. I need to see that. I need to make sure that you've all got this. So have a read of the sentence and tell me how many of the words are homophones of each other. I'll give you a minute and then I'll start giving you some hints. Go go go. So the sentence is among the many rows they had, one would always rouse the other more, making them angry and therefore causing them to leave the house. Okay, so we've had about, most of us have voted 83%. So I'll give us another five seconds and then I'll end the poll and see how we've all voted. And then I'm gonna be coming to the Q&A to ask you what the homophones are. So make sure you're ready to um, type. Bit of a, well, close between two of the answer choices. I'm gonna end the poll now and show us how we voted. The majority of us went for answer option B to let's see, well done, that's completely right. What are, um, which words are there? I'm coming to the Q&A to have a look. What are the words in that sentence that are homophones? Let's have a look, I'm oh, still seeing all the examples. Let's have a go.
let's have a look let's have a look what have we got have we got the um right answers so well done to everyone that got um two as the correct answer do 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 so many so much so much popping on the q a today yeah rose and rouse well done very very good that was that one very good what was the and those are the two words it's rose and i think i like maybe I, my pronunciation was a bit off but the many rows they had one would always rouse the other more so rouse among the many rows they had the fights one always rouse the other more so those are our two homophones they are written differently but they sound the same when we read them out um depending on how terrible your reading skills are i'm not great at reading stuff out loud i always pronounce ever since i was a kid i always pronounce things really weirdly I think because I used to read a lot and just never hear the words said out loud. You're then at like a dinner party like 10 years later and you say a word thinking you're really fancy and everyone's like, try again. Okay, anyway, enough about me. Which one of these words is a homophone? Relaunch their poll, A, B, C, or D. I'm looking for a homophone. You have a minute to get your answer in. Um, Okay, so I'll give you a hint if you're a bit stuck. Remember, a homophone, it sounds the same, but is spelt differently. So which one of the words on the screen at the moment has a word that sounds the same when it's pronounced, but is spelt differently? I'm going to give us another 10 seconds. If you didn't have enough time, remember, you can always watch this back and pause. I know that everyone re can read at different speeds for different reasons. So sorry if you didn't have time, but don't worry. Um, you'll be able to watch this back. Okay, well done everyone who voted. Let's have a look, share the results. We can see the majority of us went for answer option A. Let's have a look. Well done everyone, their answer was A. Well done to the 184 that got that right. Made is like when something is made by someone. So I made my coffee this morning, um, but then M-A-I-D -I would be made someone who tidies up. Um, so I'm not your maid is something that I might say to someone who's not doing who I'm having to clean up after. Um, so that is our homophone, very nice. So remember, it helps to um, consider graphemes or letter strings. So A, I and A blank E share the same sound. That's a really helpful tip to um, help identify homophones. So those graphemes or letter strings um, have the same sound. So again, make sure you're practicing graphemes and letter strings too. Okay, um, let's do another one. Um, which one's which one of these is a homophone? Someone was asking what rouse meant. As an extend, if you've already answered, can you have a go at defining rouse in the Q&A for me to help out um, you, you, Eucheria, Eucheria? Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. So as an extend, anyone can define rouse for me. What does rouse mean? Yeah, well done. Um, so rouse would be a bit, yeah, awake and well done, Demindra. I think that was the best answer I saw. Awake, yeah, well done, Sabaji. Um, so to rouse is to like, to stir something up or to awaken something. So like, um, uh, whereas R-O-W-S, rouse, that would be a fight. 
yeah, make angry or excited. Well done, anonymous attendee, you enigmatic English superstar. Okay, let's have a look how we're doing. So most of us have voted. So five more seconds. Just have a guess if you're not sure. Two, one. Okay, let's have a go. We're going to share the results. And I can see the majority of us went for answer option E, which is completely right. Whale. That's like those massive animals that like are like, hello, I'm a whale. That's a whale. But whale is also when you cry, with it, but it's spelled W-A-I-L. And again, we have that grapheme letter string to help us. So W-A-I-L is whale um, to cry. And we have the A-I grapheme. Graphamine, I hate that word, it's so hard to say. And then we have whale, which has the A, um, A consonant E um, letter string, which, which makes the same sound. So letter strings, really important for helping identify homophones too. Um, let's have a look at sentence. The whale came from the whale who hit himself on the boat's whale. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Um, we all, a whale is a part of a boat. The more you know. Um, okay, well done. Okay, let's have a go. Another one. Oh, yay. Joke time. Um, so again, I love a pun unapologetically. What is a moose's favourite pudding? I'm only going to give you like a minute for this one because I really should be teaching you more erudite um, sentences. But hey, what can you do? What is a moose's favourite pudding? Mine is lemon meringue from the list, but that's not that's not the answer. <laughs> okay, really good. So I'm only going to give us another ten seconds on this one. Um, so five, four, three, two, one. Well done. How did we all vote? Strong performance, everyone. Well done. Two hundred sixteen students humoring me this morning, and indeed that answer is chocolate mousse. Um, so a moose's favorite pudding is chocolate mousse. Um, again, that's a nice little homophone. They are, they sound the same, but they're spelt differently. So again, just helping you make good jokes. Cat, well, I, I, I feel like I might regret this question. Um, if you have any other particularly good punny jokes, um, let me know in the Q and A, but why don't we have a go at making one with horse and horse? Um, and I will read out my favorites. And then we've got a homonyms question coming up. Um, okay, let's have a look in the Q&A. How are we doing? Horse and horse. Let's have a look. Why couldn't the horse take Really nice anonymous attendee, gold star. Why couldn't the horse say anything? Because he was horse. The horse voice from the horrified horse, nice. Oh my gosh, Jessica, why did the horse go to the doctor? I really hope it's because um, the horse had a horse voice. Um, the horse sounded horse, well done, Hamid. Hannah as well, very good. The horse was started by a horse voice, nice. What line is this? the horse had a horse throat? Well done, Ken. Yeah, really nice horse from riding. Um, yeah, horses are cool. I'm a bit scared of horses, not gonna lie, Alicita. I had to, I went horse riding once, it was not for me. Um, but yeah, really, really nice, very good. I might say something like, um, let's think, like Sea Biscuit, that's a horse, right? Also, what a name, Sea Biscuit. Um, Sea Biscuit crackled, um, as he nate as he neighed he was a little horse something like that um he was a little horse maybe also sea biscuit was a little horse too that's a double double pun works in my head i don't know we'll see um we could also have how does a girl communicate with, with her horse when she had a sore throat she used her horse voice aha so lots of good people picking up on the horse voice um horse voice um pun really nice okay time for another question 
after that little bit of fun. So the key to answering about homonyms is context. So context is what is happening in the sentence. So we're moving from homophones to homonyms now. So what is the correct de definition of the word change in this sentence? So change is a homonym that can have a few different meanings. So she passed the last of her change to the waitress to pay for the packets of crisps. Okay, how are we doing? So she passed the last of her change over to the waitress to pay for it. Now, if you're a bit stuck, I would try and think about in the sentence, what kind of word is changed? So she passed the last of her change over to the waitress. So she's passing over the change. That makes me think that change needs to be a noun because it's something that you can hold or something that exists, it's an object and you're passing it over. So that might help you with the definitions. So when you're using homonyms in context, you have to work out, okay, is it, first thing I would do is work out the word class. Is it a verb, is it a noun, is it an adjective? That's the main ones that occur with homonyms. And then I can see, okay, she's passing change. So that suggests to me it's got to be a noun, which should help you come to an answer. I'm gonna end the poll now and see how we voted. And well done, the majority of us, 167%, went for answer option B, which is completely correct. In this context, change is a small amount of money. So we've passed over a little bit of money to get our packet of crisps. I would have got prawn cocktail because that's my favorite flavor. Um, so change could also be a verb, like to exchange something um, or to like change your look, maybe get like a fringe, maybe some highlights. Uh, maybe some nice little like layers, who knows? Um, but that's the other way of using change. It's a verb, but it's also a small amount of money. So remember to read for context. Okay, let's do another quick one. So what is the correct definition of the homonym tire in this sentence? A or B, let's get it. He didn't tire of hearing about how good he was at football. Trying to include some more sports questions for all of you sport enthusiasts. Okay, another 30 seconds and I'll be ending the poll. If you want an extend challenge, could you give me a synonym of tire in the Q&A? So of the, of T-I-R-E, any synonyms of tire and I'll pick out some favorite ones. I want some long words, please. Yep, so well done, Annie. Weaken, that's another word for tire. Exhaust, nice one, Mazza. Exhausted, Umar, nice. Sleepy, well done, Mary. Or Mary, I don't know. Exhausted, yep. Fatigued, well done, Sabaji. Bored, well done, Jonathan. And Eleanor, exhaust, really nice. If we want to, if we want like a fancy word, we could say exasperate. So he didn't exasperate of hearing about how he was at football. I mean, that would sound a bit weird, but you could do it. Um, so exasperate is another word for um, to tire or fatigue. Let's see how we all voted. Uh, oh no, I wanna share the results first. So T-I-R-E is to grow fatigued. A few of you went for a part of a wheel. That is a red herring. 
part of a wheel is T-Y-R-E. So that is how we spell tire, like the tire of a car. Whereas tire in a sense here, he didn't tire of hearing about football, um, of how good he was at football. Here tire means to fatigue or to grow bored or get exhausted. Really good synonyms coming in from the Q&A earlier. Okay, let's do another one just because a few of us struggled on the last one. Um, let's relaunch the poll. I'll show you a new question. What is the correct um, definition of the word current in the sentence? There are a few current issues that we need to address. And again, as an as a um, extension, if you could give me an antonym of current, so an antonym of current in the Q and A, that will be our stretch challenge for this question. Yep, so well done, uh, Marta. Past is a good antonym for current. Old and well done, Justice. Expired, Elonial, well done. Rushi passed, Hannah passed, well done. Expired, Freddie, nice. Okay, let's have a look at how we voted on this question. Five more seconds to get your votes in. And we can see the majority of us went for uh, answer option A, which is completely correct. Current means up to date. So you could, so current means like relevant or like actual, like happening now. And some good antonyms of that would be past or like antiquated or previous. All those would be antonyms of current. Really nice work, everyone. Right. Which word is a homonym out of the following words? A, B, C, D, or E. Tell me. First thing you need to do is remember what a homonym is. And then I need you to vote and tell me which one is a homonym. If you want to extend yourself, could you define both definitions of your answer, please? So if you think you've picked the right answer, could you give me both of the definitions? In the Q&A, remember, if you're stuck, we've had about a minute now, a homonym is a word that is, sounds the same, is spelt the same, but has a different meaning, that's a homonym. Sorry, Levi, for calling you Rachel this entire time. Again, apologies for calling anyone by the wrong name. I'm just going by your Zoom name. Yeah, well done, Thomas. Really nice definition of the correct answer, with um, which is part, of, which is also part of a train. Nice one, Thomas. I trains are cool, I guess. Oh, sorry, I don't think I'm, oh, was I sh not sharing the right screen? Oh, no, I was, people could see. Okay, I'm gonna give you another five seconds just to get your votes and don't worry if you didn't get it. Homonyms are tricky. Okay, let's see how we all voted. We can see that the majority of us went for answer option E. We had 110 votes for answer option E, tender which is completely correct. So tender has at least two meanings. Um, well, I've got five on, at least two, it can be an adjective or a, na or a noun. So tender can be like, you could be like a tender soul and be very kind and very nice. Um, you might be quite tender to someone who's just gone through a really tough time and you might get them flowers and be gentle and kind. Um, it can also be of like a food that's easy to cut through or chew, so it's not tough. So maybe if you suve some, I don't know, some vet, I don't know, I don't, I don't like a suve, but um, it makes it very like tender, not tough. So it's easy to eat. Um, it's also a vehicle used by a fire service. 
um, a dinghy or boat to ferry people around in. I think Thomas um, mentioned also it's part of a train. Um, a person who looks after some, someone else, so you might be like a tender of, uh, I don't know, of the unknown, the tender, someone, yeah, someone who looks after something else. Very good, well done. So that was our nice little homonym. Now, can, I think, we'll come back to this one at the end for some more jokes, but I think we need to do a bit more, um, a few more other questions first. Um, I want you to have a look now and tell me which of these is a Homer graph. Continue. Yes, which one is a Homer graph? If you want to extend yourself, if you could write a sentence explaining why the answer you picked as a homograph into the Q&A, that would be fantastic. Okay, so we've had about a minute. I'm going to see if we've got any good um, definition sentences in the Q&A. Lola, I'll try and remember your um, name as not being Caramella. Really nice sentence from Nicole. Really clearly written. I can understand it really 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 well steve good definition too well done julian as well yeah yeah to define both types of the word well done tobias really nice um sentence yeah well done rachel as well i don't think your name is rachel but i can't remember what the correction was apologies yep esme really really nice sentence as well great great job on the extension question to everyone um let's have a look at how we all voted i can see the majority of us bit of a split between b and z but i'm gonna end the poll and show you how we all voted um and let's have a look i think there might have even been so yeah homograph was moped or moped or moped so B was our answer. So remember, homographs are spelt the same, but have different pronunciations. So a few of us went for train. That was a red herring because train and train are both said this. We both would say the same. So we had some great sentences about train. I really liked everyone's sentences describing train and trained, but um, that they are not homographs. They would be homonyms. I know it's mean, isn't it? So train and train would be homonyms because they're spelt the same, they sound the same, but they have different meanings. So a train is something that you catch, but you might also also like train for a marathon or train for like a sprint. Whereas moped and moped, they are homographs because they're spelt the same but have different pronunciations. So remember things like row and a row. So a moped is like a vehicle, like a little bike or a motorbike. I used to have one called Cindy, um, loved her, but I was a very anxious driver, so I stopped. Um, using it um, and then moped is to um, act sadly about something so you might you might you might mope after this lesson because you're so sad it's over um, so moped and moped are homographs remember this was a tricky red herring question a lot of us went for d train train is a homonym not a homograph okay so i think we have time for one more question and then we will move on to the review so a heart let's hopefully a hard question to finish Stop sharing, relaunch the poll, go. I think I've already given you a tip for this question. Um, what is the meaning of the word axis? Oh, I'm sorry, I might have just accidentally shown the so the word on the screen, what is the meaning of it?
So I said access. So listen to how I'm saying it. How is what is the word access? Okay, two more seconds. Don't worry if you didn't have time to do it. It's getting towards the end of the lesson. So we just need to be a bit quick. I'm just running through it a bit quicker. I can see that the majority of us went for answer option A. Oh, no, sorry. Yep. A is completely right. It is the plural of acts. I think I've just given it away, but whatever. Now, if I said the word as axes, as opposed to axes, what would the definition be then? So the last one was axes, which is more than one axe. If I said axes, what would the definition be in this context? So notice how when you say a word differently, it will have a different definition. So axes is more than one axe. What is an axes? If you want an extend challenge, can you give me an example of where we might see an axis? Where would you come across an axis? Yeah, well done, New Cyber and Sabla. We use axes for coordinates. Very, very good. Okay. Just give us another 10 seconds. Remember, you can always watch this back. I know some people need longer to read and that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll now and see how we voted. And I can see the majority of us went for answer option C, brilliant. And axes is more than one axis. So you might come across this in maths when you've got to draw like Y equals X or you've got to plot some coordinates or some st stuff like that, which is upcoming in some of our up and atom lessons. We're going to be doing line graphs and coordinates, but an axis is more than one axis. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. Um, what happens next? I'll go over a review in just a second, but remember to do your homework and log into Nucleus and complete the learning challenge after this to lock in all of what we covered. You can, if you want to watch some more videos, um, you can check out our YouTube and TikTok videos. And when you leave um, Zoom, there'll be a quick questionnaire for you to complete. Now, recap, what did we cover today? We did the difference between homophones, homonyms, and homographs. Remember, homophones, they sound the same, but um, are spelled differently. Homonyms, they are spelt the same, they sound the same, but they have different meanings. And then homographs, they are, they are written the same, but pronounced differently, so like row and row. Um, we did lots of different questions on um, how to work out um, definitions of different homonyms, homonyms and homographs. Remember the AI and the A-E grapheme to define, to help like identify words which will have similar definitions. And then we had questions and polls and jokes. Okay, everyone, have a brilliant day. As ever, I've had a lovely time delivering this lesson. Um, I will be back, there'll be, um, blah, what is happening today? At 11, there is um, lunchtime logic. And then there is Atom in the afternoon at 2 p.m. And then tomorrow, I'm really excited. We are learning about Victorian London and Charles Dickens in the morning. And then we're doing some other Victorian authors in the afternoon. So Friday fun day will be a treat. I'm really excited for it. I will see you um, tomorrow at 9 a.m. for Up and Atom. Have a lovely day, everyone. And thank you for coming. See you later. Bye.